The story begins with two of the most prominent figures returning to Gotham, the city of crime and chaos. However, with a strikingly different perspective of the city our protagonist, Bruce Wayne, a 25-year-old handsome young man, the heir to the Bruce Company, flies off a plane to reach the city with a subtle optimism to change Gotham's anarchic crimes forever. On the other hand, Detective Jim Gordon, sitting in the city's metro, gets a first-hand experience of the regular badassery of Gotham's people. He, being a man of absolute ethics, has a hard time comprehending how his unborn child is going to cope with this brutal society. Jim is pessimistic about everything awaiting the near future, being concerned about his wife Barbara Kim's well-being and contemplating whether she is going to make it or not as he moves on to join Gotham City's police department. Bruce Wayne, being the eye candy in everyone's eyes, gets welcomed by a bunch of media reporters asking him to unravel the rumors of his romantic life or his plans in Gotham after returning 12 years later. In the meantime, Jim Gordon gets to witness the absurdity of everyday crimes in the back alleys of Gotham in broad daylight. On his first patrol with his partner and senior detective officer, Flass goes on to beat up random teenagers on the streets just because he thinks they are troublemakers without any real evidence. Although Jim decides to stay behind, he can sense the red alert from a mile away and at this point, he has to remain alert to every move they make with a plan to get rid of this corrupt system. Just as Jim gets mentally prepared for the worst of this corrupted system, Bruce Wayne gets back to his family home, the Bruce Mansion, which he left almost 12 years ago in search of becoming stronger, spending time abroad gaining martial arts training and scientific knowledge. In front of his parents' graves, he takes his vow to complete the lifelong mission to end the chaos and anarchy and become the ultimate savior of Gotham City. Bruce then goes on to his first street mission in disguise in the red light districts of Gotham, where a young lady of the night named Holly Robinson tries to coax him into falling for her trap. Holly gets beaten up by her pimp, who accuses her of not using the rules accordingly and hitting on the wrong guy. Bruce obviously doesn't stay silent and punches the pimp man to save the young girl. However, as he focuses on helping her fight off several other attackers surrounding him, ironically Holly stabs him in the leg. Bruce obviously is handling them easily. Watching how everything is playing out, Selina Kale, another dominatrix in the storyline, steps in to knock out Bruce instead of getting herself severely beaten up. At this point, the police come onto the scene and throw a bullet at Bruce. After a while, getting back to consciousness, Bruce finds himself sitting in the back seat of the police car, handicapped. He manages to knock off the officers and break out of the car. Even though he could leave those corrupt scum behind to burn down to ashes, he still saves them considering how their families would suffer the loss. After an easy escape, Bruce finally manages to return to the mansion, completely broken and dripping in blood. He is seen sitting alone in the room. In this setting, the sun's aura passes through the big glass window covering almost one side of the wall. In his retrospective, he tries to think through the reason for his redemption, it all goes back to that day of his childhood, when his parents got eliminated by criminals trying to protect him in the black alley. He has everything he needs for this lifelong mission, yet there is something, something core of his being that is missing, making him only a ruptured piece. He tried to be patient for so long, but not anymore. Looking at his father's statue facing directly towards him, he calls out what exactly he should do, or even how he could do so, if anything father could help him out. Just as he is becoming dizzy, all of a sudden, a bat breaks through the glass window and sits on the head of the statue. Watching the bat scream towards him, the realization hits him, this is it. He must transform himself into a bat, and fight off evil with a stronger force than evil could ever imagine. That's it, this was the missing piece of the puzzle keeping him away for so long. Moving on, Detective Jim's ethical approach didn't chime well with other officers. So, they decided to band together against him to teach him a lesson about what he was asking for. In the morning, on his way to work, Jim gets beaten by a bunch of officers, including his senior flas, and gets threatened not to cross the boundary anymore. Lying wounded on the garage ground, just like Bruce, Jim also has this realization that keeping himself enclosed will never burn down evil, instead, his family will be in danger. Following just as he thought, Jim decided to give Flass a taste of his own medicine. So, on the night of a drinking party, Jim followed Class to the secluded area and beat him up to his satisfaction, making sure Flass never gets to open up about reality to anybody. This is the beginning of Jim's forceful action to take over the ongoing evil doings in Gotham City. Following this trail, Jim manages to become a local hero whom the city folk idolizes as he single-handedly saves a bunch of orphan kids kidnapped by a mental patient. In the meantime, Bruce Wayne, now with a completely new identity as the Batman, takes his first course of action in the dark of midnight. On the balcony of a stored building, one teen guy was getting bullied by the other two, and Batman comes right in time to save the bullied guy, but soon he realizes he is a mature actor in truth. Now that Batman has been taking action lately, 
he immediately comes to the attention of the Gotham Police Department, specifically Mr. Gibson, who now has to thoroughly investigate the case now that Batman is the unseen hero in the public eye. To help him with the case, Detective Essen returns from the Lakeside Investigation Department. Now that the tension is escalating, with Batman being accused of committing 70 assaults within the past five weeks, he seems to operate only in the shadows of night. With Batman appearing in pretty much all sorts of crime scenes, Detective Jim insinuates that no one is safe from his poisonous claws, pointing to Detective Flass's broken stature. Flass immediately follows along to blame Batman for his misery, when in reality it was Jim who was beaten. Jim's prediction of Flass learning lessons from his life proves true, with Flass getting humbled down. Flass tries to explain to everyone how Batman had claws that made all of his fellow bats unconscious except him. He says that Batman's superhuman strength with ultra-fast movement nearly makes him sure that Batman is not a human at all. Batman's appearance has caused a significant rundown from the city center to the downtown alleys of Gotham by now. So, he becomes a hot topic even among the high classes of corrupt officials in the city, who see both Batman and Gordon as significant nuisances to their criminal activities. Or other officers see it as a huge advantage to use this opportunity to turn the public's eyes away from actual crimes and keep them busy with Batman's admiration. At the night party, everyone seems to suggest ways to keep their powers intact, while on the outside, Batman is busy taking over the security system, and finally, he breaks the window of the party room and burgers into it while the lights go off. Batman threatens everyone present to put a hold on their evil doings or else they are to be checked as well. The situation gets more and more intense. Jim has now got his hands full with the capture of this so-called Batman. Following the traces of Batman's activities, Jim sets up trap after trap in an attempt to fool Batman into his traps, but funnily enough, Batman never complies. It's like he sees through all of Jim's trickery. Amidst all this chaos, Harvey Dent becomes the prime suspect. But in reality, he is the one secretly helping Batman in his endeavors. Jim still has his doubts about Dent. But she hesitates, considering Dent, despite being passionate, does not have the means to carry out those operations, living on a blue-collar job. Detective Essen now has another suspect in mind, Bruce Wayne, the billionaire, who has been staying out of town for a long time and actually fits this description. Just as they get caught up in the conversation, Jim gets sloppy with his driving, and a truck crossing in front of them collides, knocking the driver unconscious. Jim tries to stop the truck with all he has, but suddenly there is an old lady walking in front. Batman rescues her. This time, Batman got completely exposed, and the entire police force is after him. He quickly flees to the abandoned building, but the force also goes after him, hitting bullets all over the place. Batman gets severely injured at this point, but still keeps on going upstairs. After hiding under the staircase, Batman manages to pull a few officers down, but in return, he gets entirely exposed. To his rescue, he summons an unknown number of bats and runs away from the crime scene with a motorcycle. He dodges off every attempt from the enemy's side to eliminate him with the help of bats, to the point that every member of Brandon's team got bitten by the bats and had to get vaccinated. Now that everything has taken a bad turn, Jim's suspicion over Bruce becomes clearer. He digs into his whereabouts, only to find out Bruce got injured exactly at the same body parts where Batman apparently got injured. While on the investigation, Detective Jim seems to form quite intimate relationship with Detective Essen, which he apparently hides from his wife. But the police department uses this piece of evidence to threaten him against exposing Detective Arnold Flass's drug operation. Following ahead, Jim and his wife Barbara go on an appointment with Bruce Wayne, where Bruce enthusiastically knocks off every accusation pointed towards him, and goes on to show exact details of his made-up whereabouts to the cop. Jim still thinks his behaviors are nothing more than pretentious, but he can't stand firm on his claims due to the lack of evidence. Bruce's words make Jim feel guilty about his behavior towards his wife, so he decides to reveal the truth to his pregnant wife, who is soon to give birth. While Harvey Dent goes on with the mission to expose drug dealers one by one, on October 12th, Jim and Barbara become parents of a baby boy. On the other hand, the hunt for drug dealers and smugglers continues. Batman gets interrupted by Catwoman Selina, and his mission does not go according to plan. Now that everything has gotten out of control, the corrupted police officers are keeping an eye on Gordon to make him comply with their absurdity. In the middle of the night, Jim gets orders from the office, but on his way, he gets attacked, and his baby boy and wife are to be kidnapped. Jim does not waste a second shooting down two attackers when the boss is on his way to kidnap the baby. Jim chases after them after intentionally crushing Batman down from his bike. Barbara gets reassurance for the first time that Batman will never harm them, instead, he is here to help them bring the criminal cops down. On the bridge, Jim manages to puncture the tires but gets pushed down by Johnny Vitti, only to get his glasses crushed, 
making him practically blind. With the ongoing fistfight, Vidi tries to stab Jim in the eyes, and Jim tries to resist with all his might, only to have both of them fall down from the bridge following the baby. Batman, the ultimate superhero, comes exactly at the right time to catch the baby and return him to his father safe and sound. The movie ends with Barbara watching everything unfold from the bridge, with nothing but gratitude in her eyes, with Batman keeping his promise to save her baby until the end.